Thanks for the intro, Simon, and thanks to the RIMS team for making today happen. It's really cool. Okay, so the f focus of my talk today is just the tools and technologies we're using at the AMA. Okay, so we'll go through just a brief introduction of who we are, some of the systems and why we're using those systems, then some of the tools, what we're doing at the moment. I'll try and get in a few examples. I'd like to share some lessons learned and what we're doing going forward. And I know we're coming up to lunchtime, so if you're still here in 10 minutes' time, we've got a free gift for you. OK, so the AMA maintenance and renewals of Auckland State Highways, 850 lane kilometres, New Zealand's busiest network. 300 million plus trips per year. That's more than 10% of the nation's traffic. And we're also, um, we're driven by our customers, by KPIs, our deliverables, and a one network approach with Auckland Transport. We're, we're an alliance, so we all sit and work together in the same office. That's staff from the NZTA, Fulton Hogan, Becker, Opus, the Resolve, Resolve Group and Armitage. And we're also really privileged to have been joined recently by the um, Auckland Harbour Bridge Maintenance Sub-Alliance. Now we're into our fifth year now. And in the first 45 months of operation, we've come in 12.5% under budget. And in his financial report, our chairman attributed some of this to improved asset knowledge through improved asset information. So let's, have a, let's take a look at some of these systems. Okay, so we've, we're a 10-year contract. So in 10 years, we've got to do things right. We've got to have our data electronic. We've got to put hard work up front into having systems that manage a single source of the truth of the data and systems that talk to one another. We've got to kill the spreadsheets. There's too many of them. We don't want our data on spreadsheets, email, or paper copy. So we, have, um, we use, of course, REM, customer management systems, job management, and um, this is a really cool system worthy of a separate presentation by one of my colleagues that feeds level of service and REM reporting. We've got Primavera for project management. We've got a fully featured document management solution. And we manage our, the data itself through a SQL Server spatially enabled data warehouse, which is updated regularly from all of these systems. And we also are using SharePoint more and more. And I liked what Adam mentioned before about using smart data. And that's, that's a phrase I'd like to reuse in the future. Okay, so in terms of tools, we need different tools, right, for different users, different disciplines, whether they're collecting inventory, condition, job management, inspection, or assessment. So on the desktop, we've, we've got RAM users. We've got, um, we're privileged to have a enterprise GIS system for our internal, internal browser-based GIS. And that's open on pretty much every computer in the office most days of the week. It gets a lot of usage. We also use SharePoint for the interface to some of these other systems I mentioned on the previous page. And we also expose portals of data. The GIS has portals exposed, and we also have our highway information sheets, the snapshot, the overview of the state highway, and its key information. Now, both of these external websites are updated fully automatically. So it's like an audit tool. Our data is naked. It's just there to be checked. Now, but what about in the field? Well, we've got GIS tools for data collection and verification. We're also using some HTML5 tools. And you guys know about HTML5? So it's just the web standard, the latest web standard that allows a web application to run on any smart device or tablet. And um, 
we're able to, we're using this in anger on a business as usual basis to find our linear location in the field with linear referencing, network inspections, incident response um, management, and structures inspections. So let's take a, a, a further look at our GIS. It's got its own slide. So I've split this up into three sections. We've got a viewer, editing tools, and analysis tools. So the primary layer on our GIS viewer is the state highway center line. Because if that's not right, everything else that links to it with linear referencing is going to be stuffed. And that's our responsibility to keep the state highway center line up, up to date. And then what else? There's heaps of layers, but primarily they're the all of the systems and tools I've mentioned on previous slides. And they're all updated on a very regular basis so we know who's responsible for updating the data, when it was last updated, when we brought it into the GIS, and when we're next updating it in the GIS. OK, so moving on from viewing. In terms of editing, our environmental mowing and network control teams are there there's data sets that they want to share, but might not be in other systems. So they can draw on the GIS. They can add annotations and labels. And when they're ready to commit those changes, they're then immediately visible for everybody else in the organization to see. And that's really cool. And then once we move away from the browser environment to the, to, for our analysis team, we've got just a few examples of the moment of um, spatial deterioration spatial deterioration evolution of scrim, the high-speed data, and also our retro reflectivity data. We've also used GIS analysis to um, determine the cost of changes for positioning advanced warning VMS signs for the new, to suit the new Coptum specification. OK. Share with you some, some lessons learned. JDI. You might have seen this spelt slightly differently before, but this is the correct spelling. <laughs> There's, because as previous presenters say, change is tough, right? And the leadership needs to come right from the top of the organization. But when it comes to implementing this change, just do it. Because um, We've got, to do the, um, we've got to do the right thing. We can't hide flaws in our data, and we need to improve it upstream. So if we create these systems fast, if we allow ourselves to fail fast, then guess what? We will succeed. And we need to use maps. Information on tables and grids is no good. Everything we work with has a spatial location. So let's put it on the map. Let's bring it to life. And um, as several, of, several slides have shown before, we need to work on our improvements, planning, doing, monitor, and reviewing, and repeat that loop. We've got to keep closing that loop. OK. So going forward, talking about improvement. We're currently running a lean project at the Auckland Motorway Alliance, and that's that's like a Six Sigma project, and it analyzes business processes and operations to implement optimizations, and we're going to remove non-value-add services. We need to manage our um, activities going forward by specific asset IDs, not just by locations or descriptions. We need to use the actual asset IDs. We're looking forward to the rollout of the NZTA GIS system. And we want to share more data with NZTA and Auckland Transport. And I mean sharing in terms of receiving, but also the ability to transmit data back. And we're also upgrading our GIS system to the very latest version of the Esri software suite. OK, so yeah, we've looked at the AMA who we are, what we're doing at the moment with some examples, where we're going, some real quick um, um, look at our systems and lessons learned. But the big thing for me is just closing the loop, sort of 
identify, expose, use, and continuously approve our data. And it's my observation that we're now using RAM more than ever before. Okay, I mentioned a freebie. So it's just the Wii smartphone app. If you work with linear referencing on the state highway, you can um, install this onto any modern, any modern device um, just to convert your linear location from GPS signal in, in real time. Normally updates every second if you're out on the network. Um, so the address m.orthomotorways.com, give it a go. And um, I look forward to speaking to you during the day. Thank you.